I was thinking as we approach, we're right on the threshold of uh, coming into what the Lord has this year. <clears throat> I was thinking about Israel and when they were in Egypt and they'd been in bondage and so they, they ate of the lamb and they saw the lamb crucified before them, as it were. They killed the lamb. They were delivered. They were, they were delivered by the lamb, and yet they were still in Egypt, but they knew they were free. <clears throat> and so they got ready, ready to, to enter in, you know, to, to get out of there and to cross over. <clears throat> you could say the big moment, and they made their way to the Red Sea and well just as they got there, I'm sure they were they were tired, they're probably up all night the night before because uh, they knew they were leaving the next day and <clears throat> probably packing and all that kind of stuff. And they got to the they got to the the great moment. You know, this is, this is the day we've been waiting for for 400 years, you know. <clears throat> We're full of the lamb, and then the enemy shows up right at the big moment. <laughs> you know, Pharaoh and, and his armies, right at the big moment. <clears throat> and they're, you know, they got Pharaoh's army on one side and mountains on the other side, and they got the Red Sea and... <clears throat> I'm sure they were freaking out, don't you think? <laughs> like big time freaking out. It's like, this is it? This is the big moment? This is, this is it? You know? And then where is it? What do we do, Lord? What do we do? Do we start swimming? Do we, you know, I mean, don't you think all of that came in their mind? What, you know? Because if we just stand here, they're going to slaughter us. So Moses says, stand here. You know, to them it was stand here, not stand still. Stand still and know that I am God. God, you brought us out of Egypt, brought us right here to the big moment, then sent the enemy, and then told us to stand still and just know that you're God. I mean, does that really make sense to anybody? No, because that's the Lord. That's our Jesus. That's our Lord. And then Israel, when they got ready to enter into the land, the bigger moment, you know, standing right on the bank, they're on the outside of the land, and this is going to be the really big one. They're going to enter in now. <clears throat> They've been waiting for this moment for 40 years, preparing. <clears throat> And the Jordan, it's, it's overflowing. They've had a rains and it's overflowing. The, it's flooding. And they're going, why, why do you make this so hard, Lord? <laughs> you, know, you did it way back there 40 years ago. And, <clears throat> and the Lord says to Joshua, um, Be strong, for I'm with you. Be strong. Be strong. Okay. Well, what does that mean? What does that mean? You know, if you're Joshua, you're going, okay, uh, you know, I'm going to grab this water and I'm going to throw it out of the way. <clears throat> but the Lord is the one who opened. He's the one who opened that water both times. And both times, they were not really supposed to do anything except for stand still and know in weakness. You know, I, I remember an old saying says, speak the truth, even if your voice trembles. You know, I like that. You know, it doesn't say, oh, I'll tell you the truth. It says, speak the truth, even if your voice is trembling. You know, and and stand still, 
and know, even if your heart or your body is trembling, even if there's something fearful, and there probably always will be in the times when it gets time to enter in. There were always, because see, can you see how the Lord's pattern is that? Because he wants us to know that it's going to be him. And he wants us to know that we're going to be okay even if our voice trembles, even if our heart's trembling, even if our, if our bodies are trembling from weakness. <laughs> that it's, a, it's, you know, it's about him even on that front. See, we say, well, it's all, all about you. It's not going to be about me. Well, it's also all about him to bring us in to what he, the spirit drew us to the heart of Jesus. <clears throat> and the Lord said to Joshua, be strong, be strong. And I know for absolute fact that guy was brand new. Moses had left, had gone to be with the Lord, and it was his first big single, this is it, you know, this is the, this is the one. And he's... He's still kind of young, and he realizes, you know, okay, I've got a choice here. I can either think that I've got to buck up, get strong. We're at the edge now. Everything's ready. I've got to, I've got to really be with the Lord. Do you know what I'm saying? But the Lord has set it up where, like in the Red Sea, you got the enemies attacking you at the very moment. You've got barriers all around and God did that because he has a message for you. It's, it's not about you. It's not about your strength. It's not about your wisdom. It's not about you. You know, he says be strong, but doesn't, doesn't the New Testament tell us exactly what that means? Be strong in the power of the Lord, in, the, in his mind, not in our own. And... Um, you know, all the preparations and everything. And, uh, you know, f you know, at the very beginning, it's like, I mean, can you just see Israel when the Red Sea opened and then they're marching out on the other side and they're singing and they did sing. When they got on the other side, they sang that song of redemption. And they're all so excited. But don't you think after a while they got really tired? Yep. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> By the time they got to the Jordan, I don't think that they were at their best. I mean, on, on so many fronts, I don't think they were at their best. And I think that's just the way our Jesus does it. I think it's just the way he does it because we, we get so weak that it's, we, we say something like, it's just going to have to be you, like, like, like we're... <laughs> But, it, but it's like in shame and in guilt, you know what I mean, almost. You know, well, I was strong, but now I'm weak, and I was really up, and now the enemy's coming, and there's barriers, and I don't know what's wrong with me. And he said, nothing's wrong with you. It's just you. That's just you. That's the way you are. Get used to it. Yeah. <laughs> Because I'm not going to do anything different except be your strength and be your life. I'm not going to. I don't have any other intentions for you. You say, what about those people over there in that charismatic church? It's just like Peter said, what about John? He said, hey, I, I can't remember the exact words, but it's something like, shut up. <laughs> yeah, shut up and just listen to me and follow me. You know. I'm pretty sure that's a pretty close translation there. <clears throat> and, I mean, that's how he talks to me. And that's what he says. That's what he's saying to me. And he's saying, hey, you know, I mean, I'm, look, I'm shaking. But it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Because we're going to see the glory of God. You know? And that's what he said to Martha and you know, Mary and, you know, uh, Lazarus is dead. This, uh, how, what happened to the party? 
What happened to how glorious everything was going to be? Why didn't you show up on time? He said, well, I was waiting for you to get really freaked out. <laughs> I was waiting for you to get to a point where you would go, you know, if, if Lazarus comes forth, it's not because you prayed and got me here. Anybody listening to that? I prayed and Jesus didn't show up in me or, you know, I prayed and did it. Well, he's not, he doesn't show up on that side of the Jordan. He doesn't show up on that side of the Red Sea. He shows up when the priest's feet go in the flood. As soon as it hits the water, then it starts rolling back. Where's our faith? In ourselves? I mean, do you understand that, that our faith cannot be in ourselves, that, that he'll do everything to deter up that so that we just love him. You know, we just say, Lord, I just love you. I love you. I love you so much. I'm your biggest failure. But I'm also one of your biggest fans. You know what I mean. You know what I'm saying. And I know that, I know that probably bothers you, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> but, but this is what you got. Amen. And when you do that, when you do that, then he goes, come here, you little knucklehead, and he hugs us up, you know. And he takes us into his arms, and he warms us with his heart Amen. So, that, so that when it's all said and done, we look back and we say, that was the Lord. You know, and, and the testimonies are, did you see when so-and-so happened? That was the Lord. You know, like we're so surprised, you know what I mean? I mean, we all, that's the way we, the testimonies are. Oh, my God, it was the Lord. Well, I thought that's what we were trusting him for. You know? But we react that way because by then we're so weak and everything, we know it's not us. You know what I mean? It's like, it's the Lord, thank God. You know, there's just a joy and an incredible reality that it's really not us, and I'm so glad. You know, it's like, oh, I'm so glad. Thank you, Jesus. You know, well, you know, the couple of weeks or a month before the conference, it's like, you know, he must increase and I must decrease, but that's in some sort of a religious tone. You know, we, it's, I know that's true, and yes, that's what's going to happen. Oh, do you really know how it's going to happen now? He's going to bring you to weakness, and he's going to bring us there so that his glory can be seen not just by us, but through us. Because some of the biggest testimonies are, did you say what happened? That wasn't me. That was the Lord, you know? And that's the joy. It's the, it, that it's the Lord. That's what makes us happy, to see him. And, to, and in that seeing, to not see us. It's like, it wasn't me, you know? He didn't, he didn't strengthen me just before the conference. And he's not. He, he's going to have you tired. He's going to have you. I mean, I, I woke up this morning and I said, Debbie, I got that Berean feeling. <laughs> Some of you, I don't know if you, but when we were at Berean, they worked us when we were in Bible school. We were tired every day. We woke up and went, oh, no. You know, you'd look out and see the sun and go, oh, no, it's going to be another day. <laughs> <laughs> You're just so tired, you know. But then you forget that as the Lord begins to move your hands and move your heart and you begin to realize that this, this whole thing was set up by the Spirit and by the Father. I mean, here's the way we have to look at it. We have to look at the whole thing. This whole thing was set up by the Spirit and the Father for Jesus' glory. Okay. It was set up by Jesus for those guests that he invites to his banquet. And he wants them blessed, and our whole attention is just going to be, you know, make sure their tea doesn't get too lower. You know what I'm saying, the spirit of that, of really being attentive and loving 
to them for Jesus' sake so that we can see Jesus smile and across the room when he's looking at us and we're doing that and, and blessing and, and you know, he goes, that, you're taking care of my people. And then at the right moment, whenever that is, when we may not even know, he's going to call us to him in a certain manner and we're going to come and somebody at, that con at this gathering is going to see the bride in you. Be it ever so small <laughs> but they're going to and the Lord's heart is going to skip a little beat there because that's what that's the big thing to him yeah that's the big thing to him see that's that's what's important to him but see if we're I'm sorry I'm going a little long but it's not even 12 so if we're focusing on ourselves to be the bride for Jesus we're actually kind of missing the spirit of it but if we're focusing on others for his heart, that's when he sees it. That's when it's going to show up. So, you know, uh, I, I don't know. Cass, do you have anything you want to say? Or are you okay? Okay. So, 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 you know, he... I'm just thinking of that time when Jesus had gone up in the mountain to pray and be alone and all the disciples came and said, hey, everybody's looking for you. And he said, well, we're going we're gonna to get in the boat and go on the other side. And he tells them, get in the boat and you go. I'm going to pray a little longer. And while they're out there, a storm comes. A storm comes. Same story. Oh my God, we're, we're going where Jesus wants us to go, but without Jesus. Yep. And there's this storm, and, and the storm is usually in us. That's the worst storm, always is. You know, the, the outward storm causes this storm in us, and sometimes the storm in us is bigger than that one. Yeah. It's like, ah, ah, you know, and it's just a little cloud with a little few drops. Oh my God! Why could you do this to us, God? You know, I mean, we do that. We, we react. <laughs> and then Jesus comes walking on the water in the storm. See, he doesn't, he doesn't calm the sea and then say, hey, I'll be up there in a minute. He's, he's big on storms. <clears throat> because he is continually having to break down our pride and our arrogance that we think we're, 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 the, we're it for Jesus. We're it for Jesus. You know? And that's, that's right. That's good. It's good that he does that. We need it. Man, pride is a big, ugly, one of the hardest things to defeat. And so, and, but in that, he's not just trying to tear down our pride, is he? He's trying to reveal himself as, you know, so here he comes walking on the water, you know, in the storm. And they freak out because they think it's a ghost. <laughs> what is that? I don't know what that is. You know, how can that be? That what, who is that? I can't see through the storm and the clouds and the rain. Ah, isn't that the truth? That's the truth. Admit it and quit using it as an event and realize that when you're in that storm and that freak out, you can't see clearly. Just, just accept it as a principle. You know, just tell people, look, this is the way I am until I see Jesus. Until, you know, I go, oh, oh, it's Jesus. You know? And then Jesus says, fear not. Fear not. Okay, why? Fear not. Why? Because don't be afraid of the storm. No, that's not what he was saying. He says, fear not. It's me. That's what he says. It is I. I think this is better words. <laughs> you know, it's me. <laughs> that the fear dissipates when we see Jesus. Okay, so we either need to come to a place where we know we are flaky to the core and weak and that we need Jesus at every moment and that he is here. Amen? We're not trying to get him in there. He's there. 
and that we can rely on that. Or we need to we need to come to a place where we realize that we're flaky and freaking out and storm scare us. And Jesus is fixing to show up because he actually initiated the storm. He put you in the boat, put you out there. You know, if it happened on land, they'd go, oh, little, let's get under this little covering. You know, let's get under this tree or whatever, you know. But he, he says, go get in the boat, storm, catch up with them, about five minutes, you know. And, and you're supposed to see Jesus in the storm instead of delivering you from the storm. You're supposed to go, oh, Jesus is in here with me. And I'm not going to be afraid of the storm because he is in here. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Did you have something, Patty? I, I had something that it was God that was supposed to tell, tell me to shut up and stop. Even though I do you really mean that? I mean, I can if, okay. Well, I'll do it with all my mouth. Okay. <laughs> tell you how off you are. <laughs> That's what I'll be preaching on Saturday night. <laughs> no, 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 no. I think there's enough to go around. Yes, yeah, Scott. Right. <laughs> a whale, you know, yep. a, a bunch of people who can throw you over. Yep. And, you know, have you ever heard the saying that throw you under the bus? Well, God sends people that throw you into the ocean, into the sea with big sea monsters that swallow you. And you say, this is sea monster. I mean, you know, that's, the, you know, that's another translation. And, you know, people say, well, I don't know if a whale can do da 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 the, I kind of like the thought of it being a sea monster of some kind because monsters swallow us up. Monsters of fear, monsters of our own flesh, a big monster, our own flesh, huge monster. You know, and these things swallow us up. <clears throat> and there, again, isn't that a beautiful picture? There in the monster... Jonah sees Jesus, and that's where if you check the prayer out, it's the most pure part of the book of Jonah, <laughs> you know. And it's the part Jesus refers to as the cross. There in the midst of the monster, he finds Jesus. And in the midst of the storm, in the middle of the storm in the boat, they find Jesus. <clears throat> and, um, you know, I mean, this is just for us here, but, you know, someday the Lord really, really has to break us from always wanting him to stop the storm and then wave to us on the shore and say, see, I'm taking care of you. 
but rather to be able to literally come to us from the storm and say, hey, this, you know, <clears throat> and, and to find the Lord, find the Lord, find the Lord. And our hearts, you know, especially during this season and what Patty was saying, it is easy for our hearts to go back to ourselves. And, you know, I'm struggling, I'm, I need, I need, that's it. And when you, once you say I need, it's no longer about him. You said, no, it's about him. I need, but you see, you see how the focus really, we're still the center of that. But when, it's, when it says, hey, you know, I've always come to you for everything I ever need. And I'm always bugging you, you know, about what I need. What do you need during this time? And again, he might say, well, go fill that person's cup or just go give that person a hug. Let me see you treat my, the people that I've invited to my supper. Just, just give me, you know, just give me a, a week of, you know, and I know it's been more than that, but I mean, you know, just give me this time period where I can see, I know you've been preparing for them, and we have, haven't we? We haven't been preparing for ourselves. This work has not been for us. We've been preparing for them, but now it's time to serve, to love, to, to, to look at Jesus' heart and say, man, I see how much you love these people. You're invitees. And we're just the servants going around, being able to serve them your heart. Serve them your heart. Amen. Well, I feel better now. It's after 12. It's after, you know, it's, it can't be right for me unless it's after 12 o'clock. And, and, and many times after 1 o'clock when I preach. <clears throat> Amen. Let's stand together. Why don't you take the hand of somebody somewhere? <clears throat> You say, Randy, you always tell us to take the hand of somebody, and you don't. I got Jesus' hand. I'm feeling the nail scar right now. Yeah, feeling. Blessed be your name, Jesus. It is your spirit that is on us to glorify you, not just in, in teaching, but to quicken our bodies. And so that we can carry out with, with uh, passion, the same passion that the Holy Spirit has, Jesus, to glorify you, the passion of life and, and quickening, quickening us <clears throat> so that we may release things of the heart that become manifest so that the Lord sees it. And Father, you are our Father, and we are your children. And you, we ask for you to, in, in all means that you have, to give us what we need to carry forth this time period so that you will look and say, you gave my son a bride, even if it was ever so momentary, you did it, and that's what this eternally is about. So, thank you. And, uh, and he would say, Thank you to Eliezer. Eliezer, you brought her to him. Holy Spirit, bring us to him. And, not, and we're just using this time period uh, of the conference, of the gathering, of the feast. Uh, as a one point to release it, but we're on a journey for this year of soaking. And Holy Spirit, we need you. We need you this week. We need you to be the fibers of our being that have strength to carry on, to be the, the attitudes and the, and, the, and the quickening that motivates our passion, brings it forth, not, 
not makes it, but brings it forth out of our hearts, for that passion is within each and every one of us. To bring it forth so that everything we do, we do with love. And that we will also find our strength in you, Lord, and also that we will find our strength in one another. Two walk together in one fall, the other is there to pick them up. And we are holding hands as a symbol of us holding on to one another. As we pass through this time, that it be a joyous time. That we remember the hand of someone that drew us up when we were stumbling. That we remember that it wasn't a bunch of individuals released at the, at the starting line to see who can get to Jesus first. But rather, till we all come. Till we all come. We stand together. We stand together right now. We stand together in spirit for your, for your delight. Even as Jesus, you are our delight. That you would be delighted. According to the Song of Solomon, that which is your bride. We ask you, Jesus, to enjoy this time. Enjoy this time. See many things that delight your heart. See many things. <laughs> that's, our, that's our one desire. Thank you that we have not just one another here, but we have the Holy Spirit who is bringing us to you. <clears throat> bringing us to you, Jesus. Thank you, Father for sending the Holy Spirit, for loosing him in our direction, not for our glory or our sake, but for Jesus' sake, that he would get the deepest desire that is so in him. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, to God be the glory great things he had done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. Holy Spirit, just begin to lift the burdens now. Amen. I, I, I'm saying that, Lord, even as I realize that that's happening. It's already happening. I'm just in agreement with you. Lift the burdens now. Lift them now. And let, let our focus resharpen and refocus stronger on Jesus than it was even before. That in our weakness, he's going to be glorified. He's going to be seen. Thank you. Thank you. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, why don't you just hug somebody and, and realize that that's Jesus' body.